Hello my friend, thank you for clicking to this video. If this is your first time here watching this video, my name is Mario Ernesto and I upload videos related to apostolry so often. So feel free to subscribe and you will learn a lot of things related to apostolry. If you haven't subscribed to my channel from a long time ago and you have been there supporting my channel, watching my video, thank you my friend. Thank you for being there. Thank you for uh, being loyal to my uh, channel. I really appreciate that part so much. So as you know, uh, the purpose of my channel is just to give you an idea how you can uh, learn apostolate, how you can um, work in your uh, own car interior. Uh, that's the purpose of my channel, giving you an idea, showing you how you can repair, make a simple repair. And some of my videos will require a lot of tools and will require you to have a, a experience, a little bit of experience, but I'm showing you how you can do it. So and on this video, I will show you how you can uh, uh, repair a 2007 uh, Ferrari convertible tab. When I say Ferrari convertible tab, first thing that you might think, oh, it is a expensive car, luxury car, and yes, even if it is 2007, the car is still costing a lot of money. If you have been working on this train, my friend, you know how important it is for us to uh, take care of the pain. This is like a toy for the customer. And Especially on Cambodia Bolsab, we have to spend some time protecting the paint. Why? Because um, we're going to reclimb on the car, we, we have to put like a phone on top of the pattern that we put or the blanket that we put just to protect the paint because we're going to put tool in there. And by doing that, we are eliminating any risk to scratch the paint. So um, I'm going to show you how you can repair this uh, Cambodia Bolsab and you're going to need tool to do it. You will see me how I do it. Uh, the best thing right here for the customer should be replaced the whole top. But this car has been indoor for uh, since his body, and I can tell you that the way I look from outside, it looked good. The top looked very good. So, um, and the customer don't want to spend money. And you know, if the customer will go for the uh, aftermarket uh, uh, top. Which one I don't recommend it, especially on this car. I always tell the customer if you're going to replace the top or uh, go for the original, don't buy an aftermarket. Why? Because sometimes you know, guys, if you have any style and convertible top, you know exactly when a customer buy aftermarket part, no matter what we do, sometimes the top is still uh, looking bad. It doesn't fit well, no matter what we do. Why? Because it is aftermarket. So what I always tell the customer, especially, especially on this kind of car, go with the original. If you go with the market, what cost costing like around, you know, GHHAs. That brand is a very good brand. There are some other brands that are good too, aftermarket. If you go with uh, that brand, what cost costing like a two grand, between two grand and three grand. So uh, figure out, aftermarket. Now figure out if he go with the original, a lot of money. So, but this time he don't wanna replace the top, and I going to make just a small repair. To do this kind of repair, here is the tool that I will use. I will use a, a drill gun. I will use a TX twenty and twenty seven torch, and I will use a cord pick. If you don't have a cord pick, uh, you can use a straight one, or even you can use a flat screwdriver. I will use a hammer, a chisel, and a chisel holder. Uh, what else I will use? I will use a glue gun. But if you don't have a glue gun, you can use a brush. I will use a glue. The glue that I will use is that one right there. That is a good quality glue. If you are living outside the United States, maybe it is hard for you to get that glue. But don't worry, you can use a lower quality glue. A set 3M spray can. I don't recommend you to use a spray uh, can for this shot. And I will use a heat gun. I will use a grinder and a three inch disc. If you don't have a grinder and you don't have a disc, uh, you can use a sandpaper. I will use a one eight drill bit. I will use a uh, plier. What else I will use? And I will use a heat trim uh, plastic protected. I will use that one. You will see where I will use it. And I will use a one eight thickness rivet Aluminum, I recommend you to use aluminum or st stainless steel rivets. One egg. And I will use a rivet gun. 
can be manually or if you have a, 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 a numeric that would be great too. So I already had that tool so now I'm going to start taking my part. But before I'm going to check for scratch on the paint, then some bump on this car. If I notice something I will let the customer know and I recommend you to do the same. If the customer is there check it in front of him if you notice something let the customer know immediately so i'm going to start taking my part and you will see everything related to how you can repair this 2007 ferrari convertible top i had the car right here so but before to keep going with this uh convertible top let me say something on spanish for those who don't speak english uh, este video muy pronto estará en español para todos ustedes los que no hablan inglés o so manténgase pendiente as you can see, I am making sure this convertible top is working. Uh, I open it all the way and I close it all the way. As a posture, as a convertible top installer, we always do this. Always. The problem with this uh, top, the driver's side is fine. You can see him right there was tight. That's the way it should be. And let's see the other side. You can see it is loose. Something is wrong in there. Uh, this tab have a lot of cable. And that part should be tight. Shouldn't be like that. Because water or wind uh, might go through it. I has to find out what is wrong with this convertible tab. It has six cables, three on the driver's side and three on the passenger side. Uh, might be one of those, it is broken or it is disconnected. I'm going to find out. To do that, I have to uh, take them apart half away from the front, half away to the back. And I'm going to remove those uh, screw right there. It's a TX27. And some convertible top Ferrari is a TX25 and some are 30. So I remove that molding and that um, rubber. Just pay attention how you are removing everything. Because remember, you have to put it back. I am using that cur uh, uh, pick, but if you don't have it, you can use a straight, a straight one or any flat screwdriver. I am disassembling that part, the side, driver's side only, because the problem, it is right there. Under that molding right there should be a cable. And I have to remove that cable. And I have to uh, disassemble this part. Just be patient if you never done something like this. There is that river right there, and that river is holding the cable. I have to uh, remove that river. You can use a drill bit, or you can use a chisel. And you can see where uh, I put the chisel. And this way it is easy to hit it with the hammer. So the river is out. So now I'm going to close the top because I need to find out what is wrong. So it is closed and I have to re uh, remove this part and I'm going to uh, move to the other side. And you see this molding, this belongs to the headliner. So you gotta be careful. Remember, if you are not going to replace the headliner, just be careful. This part right here belongs to the top and I have to unglue it. I have to separate it. And I am holding the camera one hand and I'm using the other hand, just pulling that part. And it is almost undone. Okay, that part, it is separated from the bar. Right here, I can see one spring, I can see two spring, and I can see three cable, two cable in there. Okay, I have to remove that, those screw right there. I have to remove because I have to open the top a little bit more, and this is on the way. Okay. That is ready to remove that one. You can see I open more. So this part is fine. There should be one cable inside that uh, black, like a um, 
piping and I don't see the other cable. I'm going to open it. And right there is one cable. That is fine. The problem is not the cable and it is connected. So uh, I am looking for the cable from this side. And there should be one more cable. It is not that one. And that one it is connected. It's not that one, so this belongs to the frame. And there is the other cable. You can see me right there. Okay, the problem is on that cable. See, even it is disconnected. Why this get disconnected? I have to cut it, and I need to find out why this cable, it get disconnected from the spring. So I am using a racing blaze. You have to be careful. Uh, I forgot to mention that you're going to need a racing blaze. But uh, this is one thing that you're going to need. It. Or you can use a sharp knife too. Okay. The problem is right there. That part of the cable, the loops, it is broken. The thing is, they are not going to sell you just a cable. They are going to sell you the whole top. Why? Because the uh, cable is inside of the top. Or that uh, like a piping, it is inside. So what am I going to do right here? I'm going to use a one eight drill bit and drill a hole. And this is going to be fine. Believe me, nothing uh, for any reason. Uh, it broke that part. I made a hole and I sand it. If you don't have a grinder, you can use some paper. Okay. I drill a hole. I fixed the part. Now I have to put the cable all the way inside. I have to make sure to go uh, be inside that part. And you have to pull it from the other side. What I'm gonna do right now is going to connect those uh, the cable and the spring by going to use one of these heat shrink uh, plastic protector. Uh, you can buy the whole set or you can buy uh, separated. It's better to buy the whole set. So I going I I I am putting that yellow plastic inside the cable, and then I am using a plier to pull the cable. I am pulling the cable and I am holding it with one plier. Now I get the spring and put one end of, of the spring inside that hole. And it's in. I'm going to close a little bit the end of that spring because I don't want that spring to come out from that hole. Okay, I got it. So now we're going to uh, pull this plastic, making sure to cover the spring. This is patient, so be careful. And you can see me right there. I'm going to just apply a little bit right there. And that part is done. So what is next? I'm going to use the heat gun because I need to apply a hot air in there. If you don't have like an industrial heat gun, you can use like a hair dryer and that will work. Just be careful, don't burn the hair liner. Okay, I got that part and you can see it. The spring is connected with the cable. So now I'm going to put everything back going to put this spring in there and I'm going to uh, put this screw in there so that part is done now I have to uh, put a glue right here because I have to glue part of the compatible tab with that ball right there and I put a black uh, hardboard under because I don't want to spray glue on the headliner. Do 
just remember how this part was connected and you have to do the same thing. In case if you don't remember, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, uh, take photo or take video, that way it will help you a lot in case if you don't remember how all these parts were connected. And then I put the molding, plastic molding in there. Uh, the function of that molding is to keep the headliner in place. Uh, when it open, the headliner has to be in a certain position and when it close, it has to be in a certain position. Other way, my rip or my uh, damage the headliner. Remember when I remove a river from there with the chisel? So I am putting that river back and I am using a manual or river gun. And the rivet is right there. It's holding the cable in place. Now I'm going to uh, put glue right here on both sides and I'm going to glue that part on it. If you don't have a glue gun, uh, you can use a brush and apply glue with brush. You don't have no option. For us who work on car interior or upholstery, it is easier to use a glue gun. It's so efficient working with the, this kind of tool. Even if you work on furniture, uh, it is very important to have like a glue gun. So I put glue in there and I am putting this uh, blackboard under because I don't want to spray glue at all on this uh, canvas material. So it had glue already. You know that compatible tab has some mark. So make sure, just follow those marks. When you are installing a new compatible tab, uh, it doesn't have mark. If you don't have experience, you might guess in uh, uh, how to place and rise the tab. But right here, it's not, uh, you don't go into guess. Just follow those marks. And then there is a metal molding and there is a gasket. You have to put uh, that molding with those screw right there using a TX27. I mean, on this one is TX20, our smallest. Then the front screw. So it is done that part. And you see that gasket have a, like a one metal in there and you have to pull it down, push it, and then pull it through you. It will get in. There is a hole on the frame. You have to make sure to get in. So that part is in, so now I have to put this gasket, and then on top will be the molding. Just make sure to match that hole and then uh, put those screw. You can do everything right here by hand. It's not necessary to use a drill gun. So I am cleaning, this uh, this part is done. I just have to clean it uh, from inside and from outside uh, and check it, make sure it's working like how it was before. You see everything is perfectly right there. Those screws are in place. So now I have to close this top and see how it look. Especially the part where I uh, fix. So I am closing. And this tab is closed. And now we are going to see 
it is dirty i will clean it i will put a special liquid in there just making sure to uh, look very nice it's a little bit dirty but i will clean it i'm going to see the other side the problem was on the passenger side and you can see right now my friend you can tell it, that part it is tight the problem was the spring I connected. Now it looks like if it, nothing happened. You saw the whole process, my friend. I showed you how you can do this kind of repair. I remember the first time when I installed a Cambodia board top. I couldn't sleep the night before, just thinking about that I was going to install a Ferrari Cambodia board top. So I understand if you get nervous. Just relax. Uh, I give you an idea how you can do this kind of repair. I have a lot of Cambodian board tap on my channel. If you are planning to install a Cambodian board tap and you feel nervous or you don't know how to approach, you don't know how to take them apart, just watch, uh, go to the Cambodian board tap playlist on my channel and you will see a lot of Cambodian board tap in there. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Thank you. Ciao, ciao.